Hello, everyone. Welcome to the fourth MaxMean meeting, Mathematics and Computer Science for Materials Innovation. It's a great pleasure to introduce Professor Stephen Burley from uh, the US. So who, who, has, who has many titles uh, today, uh, mainly as the director of RCSB Protein Data Bank, but also the distinguished professor at uh, Rutgers University in New Jersey and uh, at University of California, San Diego. Stephen will talk about validation of three-dimensional biostructures in the Protein Data Bank. Over to you, Stephen, please. Thank you very much, uh, Vitaly, and I, I am extremely grateful for the opportunity to present uh, on behalf of my RCSB PDB colleagues and to represent the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Partnership, of which the RCSB PDB is a, is a founding uh, member. So uh, by way of uh, introduction, here's my, uh, my outline. I'll touch briefly on the history of the Protein Data Bank and um, set the stage for talking about validation uh, by emphasizing the role that the community plays in setting the, the standards for structure validation. Uh, and I'll then introduce the PDB, the Worldwide Protein Data Bank validation report that comes out of the OneDEP system and the various services that we currently offer to support validation of 3D biostructures. Subsequently, I'll go into some detail about um, how experimentally determined structures are validated in the PDB, uh, talking about um, geometry first, and then validation of uh, the atomic coordinates against the uh, experimental data. And I'll close with a, with a very short description of some of the changes that we've made recently to our web portal, rcsp.org, that um, are now supporting simultaneous delivery of more than 200,000 structures from experimentally determined structures from the Protein Data Bank, and more than a million computed structure models coming from the AlphaFold database and from the model archive, which uh, is uh, headquartered at um, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics in at Basel, at the University of Basel. So I think uh, most of you probably are, are aware that the Protein Data Bank uh, established in was established in 1971 as the first open access digital data resource in all of biology. At the time, there were just seven protein structures, seven X-ray crystal structures of proteins that made up the uh, the archive. It's grown uh, uh, enormously to become the single global archive for experimentally determined structures of biological macromolecules, uh, including both proteins and nucleic acids. The RCSB Protein Data Bank has been funded by the NSF, NIH, and the US Department of Energy uh, for um, uh, in various uh, configurations for the last 52 years. Uh, and we're currently offering open access to more than 203,000 structures. I, I Apologies, I didn't update this. Uh, uh, metric to the, the latest value. Uh, it's probably a now over 204,000 structures. So that uh, suggests a replacement cost north of $20 billion US if you assume on average $100,000 to, to determine each one of the structures that's in the PDB. At the outset, the PDB was the exclusive financial responsibility of the United States government, uh, but in uh, 2003, in recognition of the global reach of the archive, the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Partnership was established. We now have uh, partners in US, Europe, Japan, and the People's Republic of China. And in due course, will uh, a, a team from uh, India will, uh, will join to... Um, uh, represent that uh, that large uh, community of, of users and uh, depositors. It's not an exaggeration to say that we've probably been compliant with at least the spirit, if not the letter, of the fair and fact principles emblematic of responsible data stewardship from the very beginning. Us, the PDB was walking the walk when it came to open access and fair and fact long before people began talking the talk. You can see uh, how uh, structures are uh, flowing in uh, from from uh, all the inhabited continents uh, in the world to uh, to the PDB archive. Uh, the only the only continent from which we do not have depositors is uh, Antarctica. Uh, the uh, uh, 
PDB has been recently accredited both by Core Trust Seal and uh, was named by the Global Biodata Coalition as a core global biodata resource uh, vital to uh, the uh, uh, ecosystem, the data ecosystem underpinning biological and biomedical research. At the RCSB Protein Data Bank, we, uh, we serve as the US data center for the worldwide PDB. We convert global data into global knowledge through the actions of a series of four interlocking services shown in this schematic. Service one interoperates with the, uh, the other WWPDB data centers to bring in all the information. Uh, under service two, uh, in our role as WWPDB designated archive manager, archive keeper, uh, we manage the PDB archive, and um, that includes data standards. I'll come back to that towards the end of the talk. And integration of the PDB, uh, the contents of the PDB archive with approximately 50 external data resources. This information gets exported to uh, to service three, and um, it, which is the data exploration uh, service uh, supporting our uh, rcsb.org website and also our um, programmatic access uh, to the, uh, the the archive through uh, APIs. The entire contents of the PDB are re now are currently reused by more than 475 different scientific data resources. This information was extracted from the database issues of uh, nucleic acids research, and I'm very grateful to Daniel Rigdon for his um, important service to the community in ensuring the annual publication of that uh, special issue of, uh, of NAR. We meet, we meet mil the needs of millions of users, uh, unique users around the world uh, annually. And we also, under Service 4, offer uh, resources for training, for outreach, and for education, uh, garnering millions of page views for our uh, introductory pdb101.rcsb.org uh, web portal. So let me now move on to uh, the validation uh, of uh, 3D biostructures and talk specifically about, about tools and uh, services and emphasize that PDB structure validation is a community affair. The um, the Worldwide Protein Data Bank are not the data police. The This is an archival, the PDB is an archival data resource, and um, the validation standards are set by experts in the community through the, the work of a series of interoperating validation task forces that cover macromolecular crystallography, or MX, uh, 3D electron microscopy, and NMR spectroscopy. Apologies for the missing parenthesis in this slide. Uh, we've published a series of uh, papers over the years uh, from these validation task forces, all of them appearing in the journal structure. Uh, and uh, these, uh, these, these various papers uh, represent the um, peer-reviewed recommendations uh, that were um, the result of achieving consensus within the validation task forces. Once, the, once consensus is achieved and the recommendations are peer reviewed, they're then uh, implemented within our uh, single global uh, software system for the deposition, validation, and biocuration of incoming PDB structures known as uh, OneDEP. The OneDEP uh, history here is, uh, it is uh, outlined in this slide. It was launched by the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Partnership in 2014, just after I took over leadership of the RCSB Protein Data Bank from uh, Helen, my predecessor, Helen Berman. Uh, the, in uh, 2016, recognizing that there were still significant issues pertaining to ligand validation, we had a workshop that involved both the Cambridge Crystallographic Data Center and the Drug Design Data Resource. Uh, that took place in 2016 and resulted in a publication um, that uh, the Adams, Adams et al. publication over the years, we have uh, sought to improve validation uh, incrementally. Uh, a major change in the validation system was launched uh, back in 2019. Uh, and I'll come on to some other enhancements that have been made to the validation system within OneDEP uh, as I go through the presentation. The scope of validation includes uh, polymer and ligand geometry. Uh, 
mm -hmm. assessing quality versus established chemical references. And that's typically drawn, of course, from the Cambridge Crystallographic Data Center, from the Cambridge Structural Database, bond lengths, bond angles, et cetera. Experimental data quality is assessed, and the goodness of fit between the atomic coordinates and the experimental data are, is also uh, uh, pro is also uh, computed as uh, as part of the worldwide protein data bank validation system that's embedded within uh, one DEP. We publish a for every structure in the PDB, we publish a public report uh, of uh, quality. Uh, and most of our users um, uh, who are not experts in, in structural biology, we estimate that less than 1% of the many millions of users of, of the PDB uh, uh, are actually structural biologists. Uh, the vast majority of them are researchers in uh, cell and molecular biology and other uh, other related areas. Most of our uh, users rely on these uh, at a glance quality sliders shown here on the right. Uh, so uh, for the uninitiated, uh, the higher quality structures have all of the uh, the quality measures pegged over here on the right. The intermediate quality structures will have um, uh, values, relative values uh, of, um, of these various uh, computed quality uh, metrics uh, in the middle of the slider and the, and the inferior, the lower quality on average uh, versus the average for the entire archive will, um, will have the um, uh, slider uh, metric values uh, pegged over here on the left. For many of our users, this is enough. But for structural biologists, of course, they want details. So they want the, the sort of traditional table one summary of a structure. They also want to see tabulations of geometrical and experimental data uh, validation issues pertaining both to the macromolecules and to uh, the ligands. We're very pleased that um, some journals now require the worldwide PDB validation report to be submitted alongside the manuscript at the time that the, um, the submission to the journal is being reviewed by, um, uh, by experts. And we uh, just uh, for the sake of completeness, we publish the WW PDB validation report in a number of formats, the PDF, uh, which is the, uh, the format that uh, you, most people use to actually read the report, but it's also available in XML and PDB XMM SIF formats to support programmatic uh, access. Our WW PDB validation services uh, are um, uh, span uh, both pre-deposition all the way to uh, to post-release. At the time of pre-deposition, we strongly encourage structural biologists to use our online server or our API to assess the quality of the structure while they're actually determining it before they come to deposit it. At the point at which deposition occurs, it is uh, the OneDep system will rerun the, all the validation calculations and then issue a preliminary report to the depositor flagging any uh, issues that they might want to address. Uh, we strongly encourage our structural biologist depositors to address these issues and to um, try and uh, submit to the, the PDB so, uh, the, the best possible quality structure that, uh, that they can. Immediately post-deposition, a, a version of the validation report is provided to the depositor uh, for submission to journals for review by uh, both the editors and the expert referees. Once the paper is published or um, a certain time frame is is reached with respect to the uh, uh, the date since deposition, the structures are released to the public and the WWPDB validation report is made public to all users. Every year or so, um, uh, it's not on a fixed schedule, but every uh, every year or every couple of years, all of the validation reports in the PDB are recalculated to reflect the fact that the average quality of structures in the PDB improves as a function of time. And so the standards in terms of identification of outliers, et cetera, uh, will shift uh, year on year. And so periodically we will recompute all of the validation reports and, and re-release these to, again, of course, to, uh, to all users. 
So let me talk now about uh, validation of polymer geometry, uh, and this applies to all of the three major methods that the Worldwide Protein Data Bank supports for uh, structure determination. That's macromolecular crystallography, MX, 3D electron microscopy, and NMR spectroscopy. The polymer geometry for all methods uh, looks uh, both at proteins and at nucleic acids. And we uh, we use uh, the data standards coming from the uh, uh, the ground truth that we find in the Cambridge Structural Database uh, to look at bond lengths, bond angles, uh, Ramachandran outliers, side chain rotomer outliers, chirality outliers, and planarity outliers liars for the uh, uh, the protein geometry. And similar metrics are computed for the and outliers identified for both uh, for both DNA and RNA uh, containing structures in the in the protein data bank, and uh, outliers are flagged uh, using this uh, RMS uh, uh, Z score, the RMS Z um, for uh, for bonds, for angles, etc. We also provide information about uh, polymer chain breaks, particularly in uh, protein crystallography. There can be gaps in the uh, structural model. Uh, there are certain parts of the electron density map that may not uh, provide information about uh, segments in the um, of the polypeptide chain or the nucleic acid chain, and hence there may be breaks in the uh, in the polymers. Uh, we are also particularly concerned with um, identification of uh, inappropriately close interactions between. Uh, amino acid side chains uh, or um, uh, elements of uh, of the nucleic acid structure. Uh, and to, to do this, um, explicit hydrogen bonds are either added or re-added to the uh, to the structures to ensure that um, uh, our depositors are alerted to the the uh, the possibility that there are inappropriately close interatomic distances in the um, in the experiment into the in the experimentally determined 3d structure these you know the all of the deviations from ideality in uh, the um, structures of uh, biological macromolecules uh, probably arise uh, from two sources one is just a noise in the experimental data and the second, and this is this is um, uh, the preventable cause, is um, inappropriate use of uh, restraint values in the uh, refinement of the uh, 3D structure. Unlike small molecule crystallography, uh, X-ray uh, macromolecular crystallography, and 3D EM and NMR are underdetermined uh, problems in terms of the amount of data that's available for each free parameter that needs to be varied in the structure refinement calculation. And so as a result, one has to apply restraints. And if you apply incorrect restraints, you will get incorrect bond lengths, uh, bond angles, et cetera. Uh, and uh, it, we, um, uh, we are making you know, considerable efforts with our depositor community to alert them to this fact and help them identify and utilize the most appropriate uh, geometric restraints for their 3D structures. There are summaries within the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Validation Report of uh, both overall uh, geometry quality and per residue uh, quality, and you can see uh, you can see some of these uh, excerpts from the validation report uh, depicted here for a for a particular protein data bank uh, entry um, PDBID two November Alpha Romeo. Uh, to use the NATO alphabet, uh, all of the codes, the PDBID codes are currently four characters, uh, alphanumeric characters. That's going to uh, increase uh, in um, uh, to a much larger number of uh, of characters because it will not be very long of some year, just some years uh, until we run out of all possible four letter characters using uh, alpha, alphanumeric combinations. So let's move on to the validation of the vast majority of the structures that uh, are present in the protein data bank, those coming from macromolecular crystallography or MX. Uh, there is an overall structure quality assessment, essentially a table one that looks at the, the global goodness of fit of the atomic coordinates versus the experimentally, uh, experimentally measured 
structure factors, uh, the FO, FOBS, uh, F observed uh, values. Uh, so uh, this is the result of uh, looking at both the uh, both the R free the R factor the working R factor and the so-called free uh, bias free uh, R factor. We also look at correlations between the the F observed and the F calculated from the atomic model. The um, the the data the actual structure factors are validated on resolution limit on completeness on internal consistency on the signal to noise ratio and the possibility that there may be some uh, challenges with the sample such as uh, twinning of the crystals there's local uh, structure quality assessment as well and this is again using a z score uh, uh, calculation based on the real space r factor the agreement between the experimentally measured electron density uh, for the that particular part of the protein that particular amino acid residue or or nucleotide or nucleoside and the computed the equivalent computed um, electron density map uh, and for um, just for the avoidance of doubt all of these um, uh, comparisons are made uh, as a uh, as a function of uh, uh, a calibration against other structures that have been obtained at uh, similar resolution. Clearly, the level of detail in a one Ångström resolution electron density map is much, much higher than that of a 2.5 or uh, or three Ångström resolution uh, maps. So there needs to be some uh, consideration of resolution in these calculations. Some years ago, we did an assessment trying to understand whether or not the implementation of a global one depth validation uh, standard uh, had any impact and uh, my colleague Cheng Hua Xiao um, led uh, a study that was published in structure the citation is given at the bottom of, of the page here uh, wherein uh, we looked at the quality of MX structures archived uh, in 2012 and 2013 immediately prior to the implementation of the one depth validation system versus those structures that were subject to one depth validation in 2014 2015 and what we saw was that the overall quality of the uh, structures improved after the deployment of one depth so uh, in this slider view you can see that um, the median uh, uh, quality of a structure in the PW archive uh, sits bang in the middle and uh, the median uh, uh, quality of the legacy 2012-2013 uh, structures is shown here uh, in this uh, position of the slider in yellow and the median for the one depth uh, base structures is shown here with this uh, red uh, red circle so there was a clear improvement in the uh, uh, quality of the structures between 2012, 2013, and 2014, 2015. Now, some of this would have happened naturally because crystallographers, protein crystallographers are getting better uh, year on year in terms of delivering structures of uh, quality. So what we did was then to, to uh, look at the uh, quality metrics that are present in those in the five rows of that slider. Uh, that I showed you earlier in the talk to see uh, which, if any, of the um, uh, the quality metrics uh, changed as a uh, verse of for legacy versus new. Uh, so these are box plots, and so you can see that the R free value essentially is unchanged, although it did actually the the the, um, the um, median value did actually. Uh, inch up just a hair, but we saw because of increased vigilance by the depositors concerning clash scores, we did see an, a systematic improvement in uh, clash scores. We did not see any any significant improvement in the percentage of Ramachandran outliers. Most of them are zero or or just one or or two. We saw that there was an improvement because of increased scrutiny on the um, uh, number of rotomer outliers and a small improvement in the real space R factor Z score uh, metric. Um, so what we what we've seen is uh, as a result of the implementation of uh, this uh, enhanced validation of uh, 3D biostructures coming from macromolecular crystallography in the one depth software, we've actually seen that the community responded and the quality of the structures improved. I acknowledge that some of that improvement would have occurred anyway, but I think it, the the jump that we see here 
in terms of the median value 2012 2013 versus 24 2015 um, can be attributed at least in part to the enhanced validation that we see uh, that we that we've deployed in the one dep system in the, in 2014 so let's talk about a, a much thornier issue in terms of validation of structures in the protein data bank, and those are the structures that come from 3D electron microscopy. This is a field that's very much in its infancy. It really took off at, um, about a decade ago with the advent of not only very high quality electron optics that preserve the phase information in the um, uh, in the electron uh, microscopy imaging experiment, but the advent of direct electron detectors that greatly improved the resolution limit of, uh, of, of 3D electron microscopy, moving it from blobology, and I don't mean that pejoratively, that was the state of the art uh, prior to the resolution revolution, but moving it from blobology to being able to see the individual side chains of uh, proteins, uh, in uh, 3D EM experimental maps, and uh, in the most favorable cases at the highest resolution, actually being able to see uh, individual atoms uh, in the um, uh, in the results of uh, single particle cryoelectron microscopy structure determination. The resolution revolution is beginning to take hold in the uh, in the cryoelectron tomography. Uh, for the cryo-electron tomography um, studies of proteins in uh, inside cells, etc., uh, macromolecules caught in action uh, in, uh, in in tissues that have been flash frozen, uh, if you will. Uh, but um, uh, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking today about the validation of 3D EM structures coming from single particle methods. So I'll talk about uh, efforts that have been put in place by the community uh, and then uh, and then implemented by the Worldwide Protein Data Bank to estimate resolution objectively, and you'll see it's actually not that objective. Uh, and then uh, to talk about um, uh, validating the atomic model, the atomic coordinates uh, versus the experimental EM map. Uh, using both uh, visual inspection and a quantitative method that has uh, emerged using the Q-score that was developed by Greg Pentili and Hua Chu at uh, Stanford. So some years ago now, it was agreed within the cryo-EM community that the resolution limit of a 3D EM um, experimental density map was going to be estimated using the Fourier shell coefficient analysis of two half maps with a specific cutoff in the FSC of 0 0.143. And the view at the time was that this was going to provide an objective, a purely objective assessment of the resolution of the, um, of the 3D EM map. Because we're dealing with images of the macromolecules themselves and not data in reciprocal space as we do in macromolecular crystallography, it was, um, it's, it, it it proved to be difficult to uh, prior to this uh, uh, adoption to uh, estimate the uh, the true resolution limit of um, of 3D EM maps. What we've discovered subsequently is this resolution estimate based on the Fourier shell coefficient analysis depends on the masking of the experimental um, density map, and differing values can be. Uh, can be computed from the same underlying information if the shape of the mask that's used in the mask in 3D uh, is used in, um, in the FSC calculation is different. Uh, so that means that this is not an entirely objective measure of uh, the resolution of the uh, uh, of 3D EM maps. And I think more work is going to be done in this area by experts in the community and once uh, a uh, once a new consensus emerges from uh, from uh, the 3D EM validation task force, uh, the Worldwide Protein Data Bank, of course, will implement this in the one depth system. So at present, what we do is we uh, report both an author and one depth calculated experimental map resolution. But this just does need to be taken with a grain of salt. And my um, recommendation uh, for those of you who are um, want to understand this. Uh, 
phenomenon uh, more carefully um, in more detail is to actually visually inspect the 3D EM maps. And what you'll see in some parts of the structure is that the amino acid side chains are very well resolved, particularly those uh, found in the hydrophobic cores of the protein components making up the larger assembly that's been studied by 3DEM. But that you, then you'll also see that there are parts of the structure where uh, there, per, there was perhaps some conformational variability in the structure of the macromolecular assembly and hence a blurring of the 3DEM map and, um, and lower resolution. So not only is uh, their information in the 3D EM map about the overall resolution limit of the system, but there's also information in these maps about the about how well resolved each component of the macromolecular sample uh, has been resolved in the uh, in the 3D EM uh, single particle experiment. So uh, initially um, the validation of atomic models versus experimental EM maps was done through visual inspection. And so what we provide on in the WWPD valid, PDB validation report are projection views of the experimental EM map over, that's, so this is contoured here in yellow on the right, the three, uh, three views projecting down the X, Y, and Z axes respectively, and the ribbon representations of the atomic coordinates uh, that are shown in blue. So what you can see circled in uh, with uh, with the red circles is that some of the components of the uh, atomic model, uh, the uh, the atomic coordinates, are not actually um, uh, do not actually fall within the well resolved three uh, D E M density of the map. So you you should trust the parts of the atomic model that you find um, that fall within the, um, the confines of um, the experimental EM map. And you should not trust the regions where there's poor overlap between the experimental EM map and the atomic coordinates. And you can see this, I think, quite, quite graphically here, if you'll excuse the pun, uh, both for the y-axial view. So this domain of this particular large assembly and this domain of the large assembly, th those atomic coordinates should not be trusted. In the in the z-axial view, you can again see that they they fall entirely outside the uh, uh, the confines of the uh, the well-resolved parts of the three D E M map. The uh, depositor had information about the 3D structure of this part of the, of the sample from another source. And so they included it into the in the atomic coordinates. But it's important to understand that this was not um, actually uh, reflected in the uh, experimental data that were used uh, to uh, determine the atomic coordinates for the remainder of this uh, macromolecular assembly. Now, uh, since these qualitative measures were implemented, uh, Greg Pentili and Wachu have been working to, def to define uh, more objective measures uh, using a, um, uh, a metric known as the Q-score, which both estimates at atom resolvability and the fit to the experimental EM map. The values of um, the Q-score are resolution dependent, so that one needs to, to uh, take this into account. Uh, higher values of the Q-score represent superior uh, atom resolvability and fit to the experimental EM map, uh, and they're shown here in cyan, uh, circled, um, and uh, lower values are um, uh, shown in, uh, in purple or, uh, or brown, and they, uh, you should not trust the purple or brown regions of the uh, 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 so the, the purple or brown uh, regions circled here. The, um, the cyan regions are, uh, uh, are actually uh, rep represented in this uh, much better resolved portion of the structure. The um, using the same color coding uh, with the uh, atom uh, inclusion uh, 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 measure of, of quality, you can see that you should not trust the, uh, the parts of the structure that um, uh, are either purple or brown, whereas you can trust the parts of the, of the atomic coordinates, uh, which are uh, shown here in, uh, in cyan. Uh, 
the re recall that I told you that some parts of macromolecular assemblies are quite well resolved in uh, in single particle cryo EM structures and other parts may not be. And so within the WWPDB validation report three, for 3D EM uh, structures, uh, there's an overall uh, metric of atom inclusion and an overall metric of Q score. But then there's also uh, metrics for each of the individual polymer chains. And you can see that some of these are quite well resolved because they've got higher um, Q score values and higher atom inclusion values than others are quite dismal and are showing up in either purple or uh, or brown. So again, do not trust the purple or brown um, highlighted chains here in this particular exper uh, particular experimentally determined structure, PDBID eight Echo Romeo Romeo. Uh, you should not trust chains E, F, I, and J, the atomic coordinates of those. Uh, and there's obviously there's correlation between um the q score and atom inclusion uh, and again don't try in the atom uh, inclusion uh, column of this table don't trust the purple or brown chains and again that's e f i and uh, and j in this this particular case i don't mean to be critical of the team that uh, deposited um Eight Echo Romeo Romeo to the protein data bank they did i think they did the best job that they could and what the validation report uh, does for us is to uh, to help the users make an informed choice about which parts of the atomic model, which atomic coordinates can be trusted, and which should be um, uh, should be uh, treated with a grain of salt and possibly ignored. So there's another way to look at this, of course, which is. Um, the 3D EM experiment is telling you uh, a great deal about the uh, 3D about this part of the macromolecular assembly uh, chains A through D, uh, but very little about chain E, uh, where the, the Q score is one tenth, approximately one tenth of the uh, average value of these these four chains. So clearly, 3D electron microscopy is not the right way to learn about. Um, the uh, role that chain E is playing in this particular macromolecular assembly is uh, one of them, the polypeptide chains comprising the assembly. Uh, so that suggests that uh, another method, uh, another experimental method should be used to uh, try to understand the role that uh, chain E is playing, such as site-directed mutagenesis. So you can view this as a glass half empty problem and say, oh, isn't it terrible that we don't have uh, information about chain E? Or you can view this as a glass half full problem and say, okay, here's an opportunity to learn about chain E, but we, de we need to, uh, we now understand that we need to use methods, non-structural methods, uh, or indirect structural methods such as site-directed mutagenesis to uh, to get out what's happening with chain E. With the advent of AlphaFold uh, and AlphaFold 2 and RosettaFold 2, of course, we can actually generate uh, computed structure models, predicted structures for chain E, and then use that information uh, along with um, other considerations to plan experiments to, to get at the role that chain E may be playing in the biological function of this macromolecular assembly. Uh, Q scores are highly resolution dependent. As you can see here, the distribution of Q scores in the uh, for structures in the PDB uh, in the two to three Ångström resolution range is uh, shown here. Uh, here are the median 25%, 5%, 1%. Uh, uh, values, whereas uh, nine to 10 angstroms, um, many of the Q scores are actually negative, uh, falling below zero, which is uh, the 25. So to 25 percent of the Q scores, uh, overall Q scores of structures in the PDB fall below below zero. Um, that situation is uh, is similar for uh, even lower resolution structures in the 19 to 20 uh, Ångström range. So my recommendation is that Q scores should be used to to try to understand the quality of structures that have been determined with resolution limits somewhere between one and five Ångströms, uh, but not beyond. And uh, the five Ångström cutoff uh, uh, should be used, and Q scores are should be viewed as being unhelpful. Uh, in uh, for lower resolution 3D EM structures. Uh, we are currently working, uh, the World Wide Protein Data Bank is currently working with um, uh, Drs. Pintili and Chu 
to uh, use this Q score to try to identify outliers, both at the level of individual structures and individual amino acid uh, residues in uh, in structures. So uh, here's a plot of um, Q score for a selected uh, number of uh, of structures versus resolution. Uh, and you can so each dot corresponds to uh, a particular structure with a with a Q score uh, value here at a resolution uh, value here. And uh, Greg Pantile fitted a um, polynomial, uh, did polynomial regression fit, doing curve fitting through this, and then uh, with a very good correlation coefficient uh, to the polynomial model, and then um, was able to, uh, working with uh, Cheng Hua Xiao from my team, who is a trained statistician as well as a PhD structural biologist, uh, were able to, to um assess the 95% confidence interval as a function of resolution. Uh, they verified this with men. I had experts in the RCSB PDB, uh, 3D EM experts, verify this um, by manual inspection. Uh, and so one can think of um, structures with overall Q scores that fall outside the 95% confidence interval as, uh, as out outliers. And we're continuing to um, develop this uh, uh, this approach to understanding outliers and working with other uh, experts in the 3 dm community to gain consensus. So let me move on quickly to uh, small molecule ligands, a very important part of uh, macromolecular crystallography structures if one is interested in um, uh, structure-guided drug discovery, etc. So more than 70% of PDB structures uh, contain small molecule ligands. Uh, there's been very significant growth of unique ligand definitions in the Protein Data Bank Chemical Component Dictionary. Uh, with COVID-19, we saw a, um, a big emphasis on fragment screening of SARS-CoV-2 proteins. Uh, and so that means that there's a, now an, a lot of somewhat smaller chemicals in the Chemical Component Dictionary than, uh, than we saw previously. Ligand validation at uh, the PDB has, uh, uh, is, has been an iterative process. Uh, I, we had a very important workshop back in, uh, in 2016, the uh, results of which were, were published uh, in, uh, in structure under Adams et al., uh, first page of the paper shown here, and um, a series of um, recommendations uh, emerged from uh, experts coming from both industry, structure-guided drug discovery practitioners, and academe uh, for new ligand validation tools to be integrated within uh, within OneDep. Uh, code was uh, contributed to this process by Global Phasing Limited, uh, led by Gerard Braconia, and Validation 2.0 was launched uh, with, the, with the benefit of this uh, additional uh, code uh, in, uh, in 2019. So we now, within the WWPDB validation reports, provide very detailed assessments of the quality of ligand structures, as you can see here. So the green, uh, the green bond lengths, the green uh, bond angles, uh, torsions, and rings uh, are um, uh, those that fall well within the, uh, the range of expected values coming from the Cambridge Structural Database, and the outliers are uh, highlighted here in, um, in magenta. Uh, we also provide uh, projection views of the agreement between the atomic coordinates of the ligand and the experimental uh, uh, crystallography map. And so here you can see a, um, uh, a, an NADP molecule uh, and the corresponding electron density feature in the experimental map. And you can see that there's a very good uh, correlation here between the two. And uh, here's an NADP in another structure with a very inferior fit uh, between. So it's probably the case that in this particular um, uh, structure, one Zulu kilo four, that the um, the NADP was only partially occupied in the binding site, and that's and for that reason you see such poor uh, electron density. Um, if one is interested in the interactions of NADP with proteins, you should be focusing on these kinds of structures and ignoring these kinds of structures because the experimental data simply don't support the uh, interpretation that was made. We've gone on, uh, Cheng Hua Xiao, this trained statistician on my team, have gone on to um, actually uh, try to uh, 
provide uh, easier, uh, easier to understand tools for assessing uh, quality. Uh, we looked at uh, more than half a million ligands in more than 100,000 uh, PDB MX structures and did some principal component analysis, looking at the real space R factor, real space correlation coefficient, and then RMSZ on bond lengths, bond angles, and clashes, and asked the question um, whether or not we could actually simplify the um, uh, assessment of, uh, of quality for our non structural biologist users. Uh, and we've been able to do that um, by generating a principal component that um, explains most of map model fitting. Uh, the range, a range of uh, cases is shown here from the inferior to the very superior, um, and then some uh, uh, intermediate cases with uh, differing va different values uh, on this uh, vertical slider. That's enabled. That's allowed us to rank the scores both for the map model fitting and also the geometry fitting. And so in a two-dimensional map, you can see the uh, that uh, for a particular ligand in uh, in a in a in uh, a particular set of in a particular structure, in this case it's six whiskey Juliet Charlie. Uh, you can see uh, multiple instances of uh, of the same ligand. This this is a, a case where there are four copies of the ligand in the asymmetric unit, and clearly this is the better one, uh, although not uh, not that spectacular both in terms of geometry and experimental data fitting. Uh, this uh, graphic is uh, available on the rcsb.org website, and when you click on that uh, on that feature, you can actually uh, go directly to a, a, um, a 3D molecular graphic view of both the electron density and the atomic coordinates of the, the um, ligand in the context of the protein to uh, be able to make a, a detailed evaluation of the, the fit of the, uh, of the ligand atomic coordinates to the experimental data. I'll just touch very briefly on uh, validation of, uh, of NMR structures. This, these now represent the minority of, of uh, macromolecular structures housed in the protein data bank uh, archive. Uh, we validate the atomic coordinates against the experimentally measured chemical shifts. And as of 2020, we validate atomic coordinates against the restraints that were used in the NMR structure determination. Um, very soon, we will regenerate all of the WWPDB validation reports for NMR structures to reflect both the validation on chemical shifts and the validation on restraints. A paper will be submitted next week to structure describing the um, the new um, uh, validation on restraints uh, that's uh, that's been deployed in in one depth since uh, since 2020 so those of you who are interested uh, will will be able to see the uh, the all the gory details uh, I just I, I mentioned in my two sentence abstract sorry it was so short uh, that I wanted to say something about the changes we've made in the last few years to the uh, to the software architecture underpinning the rcsb.org web portal of the RCSB Protein Data Bank US Data Center of the Worldwide Protein Data Bank Partnership and you can see here um, a view of the data flow. Uh, that allows rcsb.org to deliver more than 200,000 PDB experimental structures as we've already always done, alongside more than a million computed structure models coming from AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning methods. The key here is that the data standard for the PDB archive, the PDBX MMSIF data format, has been extended to uh, establish a model SIF data format, which puts the data standard of the PDB archive and the data standard of the AlphaFold database and the model archive on exactly the same footing with um, uh, the possibility of interoperating between the two types of 3D biostructures, the experimental and, the, and those computed from AI and machine learning. Uh, both types of structure information uh, go into our extract, transform, load, our ETL uh, module. Uh, which then um, they're then exported to our uh, data warehouse uh, so that uh, our data APIs uh, uh, can uh, can interrogate the uh, the data supporting programmatic users and also supporting rcsb.org web portal users. 
We use Elasticsearch for the, uh, the indexing so that one can do um, text search across the entire, uh, entire contents of the archive that uh, complements being able to do searches on uh, amino acid sequence, on sequence, on amino acid sequence motifs, on structure shape, on uh, structural motifs. So that was an example of that would be the catalytic triad of a serine protease, and also searches on uh, the chemistry of both the protein and the ligand. Uh, so the uh, all the very considerable efforts that went into making this possible have been described in three papers, which are um, the citations for which are uh, are provided here. Uh, all, all appearing in the Journal of Molecular Biology uh, over, over the last few years. So to recap, I've told you about something about the history of the Protein Data Bank and emphasize the importance of community engagement that the Worldwide Protein Data Bank uh, participates in, uh, catalyzes and fosters, uh, working with our various uh, method-specific validation task forces, and then uh, I spent, of course, the bulk of my time talking about um, WWPDB validation of 3D biostructures in the context of, uh, of one DEP for all three methods of uh, structure determination. And I touched very briefly on the, uh, the enhancements that we've made to, uh, to the web portal uh, to support simultaneous access to uh, both experimentally determined PDB structures and uh, computed structure models. The significance of this for the 99% of our users who are not structural biologists is that it allow, it provides them with the first time with complete 3D structure coverage across all of the many of the important proteomes. So all of human, all of the model organisms, uh, and then all of selected uh, bacterial pathogens and, uh, uh, and also uh, various proteomes that are of interest to the US Department of Energy because of the role that they can play or are playing in um, climate change, in trying to uh, understand and uh, mitigate uh, climate change. So with that, I will uh, I'll stop. I want to acknowledge the very large team of people supported by the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health and the US Department of Energy that make it possible for me to stand here at the tip of the spear today uh, and um, uh, make this talk. I want to thank our host institutions at Rutgers UCSD and specifically the San Diego Supercomputer Center and the University of California, San Francisco. I want to acknowledge the contributions of our worldwide protein data bank partners. And I want to conclude by uh, recognizing the enormous contributions that were made by uh, Professor John uh, Westbrook, my second in command at um, RCSB Protein Data Bank, who died tragically in um, 2021 from a first myocardial infarction and uh, from which he was uh, he, he did not recover. Uh, his um, contributions to the Protein Data Bank, to the Worldwide Protein Data Bank, and data science for biomolecules in general uh, are, uh, are legion. And... Um, we are doing everything we can to honor his memory and continue to uh, continue to strive for for excellence, both within our CSB Protein Data Bank and with the, within the Worldwide Protein Data Bank partnership. Uh, because of the um, because of the uh, nature of the audience in this particular uh, conference, I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that at Rutgers we have an opening for a database programmer. And I urge you to look, those of you who might be interested in, um, in working with the RCSB Protein Data Bank, um, you would have to be based in the state of New Jersey. Um, w, uh, RCSB PDB employees are employees of the state of New Jersey, and there's a residency requirement. Um, we do operate a hybrid office mode, so we, um, we have individuals on our team who, uh, who work both uh, from home and in the, uh, in the office, in, 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 the, in the dry lab. Details can be found at www.rcsb.org slash pages slash jobs. And so with that, I will close and I'll stop sharing my screen and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions. And uh, those questions I'm unable to answer, of course, I'll be happy to address uh, through uh, email.
Thank you very much, Stephen. Is it okay to keep your... Okay. So let us thank Stephen first. So thank you very much for your comprehensive talk. Uh, would it be possible, Stephen, please to keep your slides uh, because it, it might be easier to ask questions. Uh, on, oh, sure. On... I'll, uh, so I'll just put my uh, my email into the chat. And so sure. let me re let me reshare, of course. Yeah. OK. Uh, and I'll go into slide sorter mode. So if, uh, I hope everyone can see the slide sorter mode. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm yeah, happy. I've got a few minutes left in my uh, my one hour allocation. Uh, uh, right. So you have about here yeah, four minutes. Uh, Dan, uh, would you like to ask a question? Yes, I would. I mean, there's some really nice work work recently, particularly on ligands and the NMR stuff. I look forward to seeing that. I was just wondering though, the the X-ray and the cryo task forces have they kind of concluded because. As it happens, we have a, a new validation method of our own that we're kind of going to be demonstrating, picks up quite a few errors in the PDB. And at some point, it would be good to have a conversation about making that method or the, you know that kind of analysis, I mean, not necessarily part of the front page, but so make sure, make the PDB aware of it as a possibility and users uh, allow access to it. Um, so, what, what what are the possible? What's the recommended route for people with new validation methods to approach the PDB? So, the um, I acknowledge that um, I acknowledge that. Thank you. I acknowledge that um, validation of macromolecular structures uh, from crystallography, although mature, uh, is not yet a fully solved problem. Uh, it is the case that validation of 3D EM structures is still very much in uh, in its infancy. Uh, the EM uh, validation um, task force is is still very active, and um, so my recommend my recommendation, uh, Daniel, would be for you to, um, if you reach out to me, then I'll uh, with um, with your offer. Uh, then I'll uh, I'll refer that to the uh, 3DEM uh, validation task force membership, and um, there'll be an opportunity. I think that there would be an opportunity for you to to be able to contribute. So to the extent that your that. your new validation method uh, can improve MX structure validation, uh, we uh, we're certainly open to uh, to the possibility. It's uh, this mm -hmm. is it, it's. It, Inevitably, structure validation is a moving target. Uh, mm -hmm. I would I would very gently push back slightly on your errors in the PDB um, state uh, phraseology and just argue that most of our depositors, I think, do the best job they can with the tools they have available to them at the time and the um, uh, and the quality of the data that they were able to obtain experimentally. Uh, we all acknowledge that uh, none of the structures in the PDB are perfect. Uh, what the key with validation is to flag for the users which parts of the structure are trustworthy, mm -hmm. more trustworthy, and which parts of the structure are less trustworthy, and then allow the users to make informed decisions about how they're going to take the, those data and use them to plan uh, new experiments uh, uh, to, to get at function. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I I totally agree that you know the, the errors that we're picking up are, are sort of you know people's best efforts in the time. But I mean, they're equally they are there are some clearly sort of gross I mean, mistakes are, that you can some, correct. There are some, yeah, you're absolutely right. There are so one of the challenges that we have operating an archival resource and not being the data police is that we do not reject anything that comes into the PDB from a user. If the yeah. if if the structure deposition meets the criteria for inclusion, then then essentially it's my depositor right or wrong. Even though in in a very small number of cases there may be there may be frank errors in the structure, I acknowledge that. 
but we don't ex we we don't disqualify depositors on the grounds of well you have too many outliers so we're not going to let you put your structure into the pdb that's something that could change with time but it would require the community come forward and urge us broadly speaking the community coming forward and urging us to take on that role of being more aggressive about the um uh the scrutiny of the the data and a, and a decision as to whether or not to include in the PDB. Yeah, no, I can see that's a separate question. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, okay. uh, Dan, for your questions. So let, let me stop the recording and uh,